This video is going to be a little bit more personal because I myself was born with pectus excavatum and I did not get surgery to fix it. Instead, I used the principles I'm going to talk about in this video to get pretty significant results improving what my rib cage looked like and getting rid of some of this sunken chest. When I was younger, I was extremely self-conscious. I was so unwilling to take my shirt off around people. Not only was I this young kid with a lot of acne, but I also had this depressed chest that was really just so different than everyone else. And I never wanted to take my shirt off in locker rooms, never wanted to go to the beach or a public pool. And really, to be honest with you, this is what got me into doing what I'm doing today. My insecurity of wanting to improve my chest and try to build some muscle to cover it up is pretty much the foundation of everything that you see in terms of content I put out. Now, with pectus, what you have is a depressed and collapsed sternum. Now, this can have varying degrees of severity, but the idea is that these ribs are going to be in a position that is very internally rotated. Now, this represents an exhaled position of our rib cage. When we exhale, these ribs come down into internal rotation. When we inhale, they should come up into external rotation but these ribs in particular down here near the lower body of the sternum are really not going to want to externally rotate because they're going to be so compressed and tight because that is the structure of our rib cage now many people are going to tell you on the internet that it's important for you to be able to stand upright with good posture and not have a depressed chest when you're walking around with rounded shoulders and also to strengthen muscles on the back side of your rib cage and also building muscle helps. I agree with that to a certain extent and I certainly think building muscle is a huge part of this but I also think that there's a big missing piece here which I talk about in a lot of my other content and that is the ability to expand the rib cage circumferentially. When we inhale we should get that 360 degrees expansion of the rib cage from front to back side to side. Now with pectus you're not going to have that. You're going to seek a compensatory inhalation strategy which oftentimes revolves around you trying to flare your lower ribs more because these lower ribs down here are the most pliable and changeable ribs in the entire rib cage and even your axial skeleton which is your skeleton minus your limbs these ribs and bones easily change shape because they don't have as fixated of an attachment to your sternum like your upper ribs do so what you oftentimes see with people with pectus is that they have very flared ribs because that's where they're trying to inhale and expand and they have oftentimes necks that are trying to help them out with inhalation because your neck is secondary in terms of its ability to help you create expansion and inhalation to your diaphragm, which is obviously the primary thing that should be helping you. Now, if your neck is chronically tight, your diaphragm is not going to be working too well. And that neck that's tight on the front side is going to pull your neck forward as you elevate these ribs like this. Now, what we need to be able to do is get expansion at both the back and front side of the rib cage. I know it's weird to think about the back side of the rib cage expanding in this circumstance, but we can do exercises for both because if the back side is compressed, then we will always be looking for a compensatory inhalation strategy because we have such a huge cavity in the back side of our rib cage called the posterior mediastinum, which is much bigger than the front one, by the way. So we need to teach the whole rib cage to expand and get these ribs in the front to come down and make it easier for us to do that because exercise that we're going to show you later are going to be harder than the ones that get the rib cage down in the front in the first place. So we need to get these ribs down, expand the back, and then go after the front side of the rib cage in many cases. What we're going to do to start is get in obviously a seated position where we have our hips and knees bent at about a 90 degree angle and our feet are flat on the floor. We're gonna feel our sit bones evenly on both sides. And if we're doing that, our pelvis is in a good position. Now, making sure our head is stacked on top of our rib cage and pelvis, we're going to make sure that the desk height or whatever we're using here is allowing us to have about a 60 degree angle of our humerus relative to our trunk here. 60 degrees or less of this angle right here is what we're looking for. And then we're gonna get our elbows wide enough so that way we can get contact with our inner medial elbow this bone right here on that table or desk or whatever we're using there 
So the width you go will depend on the range of motion available to you. So your hands are gonna form about this sort of a shape right there. Now all we're gonna do is slightly push the rib cage back and protract the shoulders without pushing the head forward like that. So I wanna make sure we stay stacked and the ribs are just going back a little bit. And then you're gonna maintain that position as you breathe through it, just like any other drill. Exhale through your mouth softly, about five to 10 seconds. And then you're gonna feel a little bit of side abs engage, not your six pack. If you exhale softly, it'll be more of your side abs. And then maintain that about two out of 10 as you inhale through your nose, nice and chill. And that's going to expand your back right here. The key is, can you maintain this stacked head over your rib cage, over your pelvis, without depressing your sternum and shoving your head forward? That's the biggest common mistake you're gonna see on this exercise. So Trevor, if you show them what happens with that, that's not what we want. So I wanna make sure we're nice and upright and tall, feeling our sit bones, and just a little bit of protraction, pushing the ribs back right there, feeling those inner elbows. Now it's really important on these exercises that you do not kick on your neck. And there's two ways you can avoid that because many people are going to, first of all, not have their chin in the right position. They need to keep their airway open. If your chin is too far down or too far up, airway's not in a good position. So chin directly at the ceiling. And then you're only going to inhale as much and softly and silently as you can until you feel any tension in your neck whatsoever. So if you feel that, use less inhalation, very soft inhalation. I should not ever be able to hear you inhale if I was in the room with you. This will allow for genuine expansion of this area. Now, many people are going to feel like they really need to open up that space, but it's been compressed and tight for so long that we need to start off easy and go from there. You will screw this up if you do not do these instructions well, if you don't follow them well. So please, if you're going to kick on your neck or you're likely to do that, and you'll know it because you'll feel it, there's two ways you can do that very slow for about three to five seconds and soft, or you can take half inhales and just inhale as easily as you can for about two seconds, and then you can exhale again from there. But if you feel like you can't get a full inhalation or a good inhalation without feeling your neck whatsoever, then you probably need to spend more time on exercises like the first one to open up your ribs in the first place in the back because that's where you have more area to expand. If you like this approach to the body and addressing the root cause of a lot of these issues, check out my beginner body restoration program because that addresses a lot of the common issues that can come from pectus and other common movement limitations that a lot of the average person deals with. To start for this, we're going to be in a hook lying position where we're on our back and we have a pillow underneath our back. And the pillow is starting at the bottom of our pelvis right here and it's ending just at our head. So our neck is gonna be slightly supported, but our head's gonna be off of it. So it needs to be just a couple of inches thick, not much more than that, but enough to give us some elevation off of the ground because that's gonna help us open up our chest. Now, it's very important here that we have our head in the proper position. We need to have our chin directly up at the ceiling. We don't want it to be too low and we don't want it to be too high. So the pillow needs to be the right height or that object that you're on to allow the chin to be directly at the ceiling. So we're gonna start by bringing these elbows out to shoulder height and then just dropping them and relaxing them on the ground. If you can't get them all the way on the ground relaxed, that's okay, we'll talk about some modifications in a second. But basically you should be able to do that without these low ribs flaring excessively. You're gonna have a little flare, that's okay, but if you feel like you can't get your arms in that position without a ton of extension occurring as a result of that, then we need to add in some modifications and support. That's coming in a second. So we're here, nice and chill, everything's relaxed. You shouldn't have any muscular tension in your body whatsoever. We're gonna initiate this by doing a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. So all Trevor's gonna do is just slightly tuck his hips underneath him, just a tiny, tiny bit. And that'll help him get less rib flare right here. So he can imagine doing this by just putting a little bit of pressure through the floor and squeezing his glutes just a little bit. Okay, now what we're gonna do is a nice, soft, long exhale through the mouth, side out. 
for about five to 10 seconds until you feel your side abs engage. Try to minimize the contribution from your six pack rectus abs. The softer and longer the exhale, the more you're going to get your side abs and the less you're gonna get your six pack because the six pack will crunch you down and we don't want that. We want the side abs to work to bring the ribs down. And then at the end of that exhale, close your, close your mouth, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth and maintain a very slight amount of that contraction in your side abs as you inhale very slowly and silently through the nose for about three to five seconds. The key here is can you keep your neck 100% relaxed? That's really your primary concern here. Never, ever, ever feel your neck. If you do, you're inhaling too hard or for too long. So again, let's recap. Nice exhale, maintaining that pelvic tilt. Side out, five to 10 seconds. As a result of that exhale, you're going to feel a little bit of side abs. Maintain that very slightly. As you inhale through the nose, you're gonna feel your chest open up super nicely and your neck is gonna stay relaxed. If you're struggling with too much tension or discomfort with your humerus back into external rotation, what you can do is get in that same position, but just give yourself some elevation. We have yoga blocks here. You could use towels rolled up, you could use pillows, doesn't really matter, whatever makes you comfortable. And if that's even too much, then you can go boom, right here, boom, right there. And then you can just chill in that position, whatever works for you. The goal is zero tension whatsoever. Okay, now for this next one, you're going to want a ball like this, something that's pretty big and squishy. And you wanna start with your feet comfortably, flat on the floor, a little bit further away from you like this. And you want your knees in line with both your feet and your hips. You're not out here, not in here. What you're gonna do is first get yourself in a position where your sternum is up towards the ceiling and you are also comfortable and have an open airway. So what that looks like is going here and then rolling down until you feel like you find this happy area where your neck is relaxed and your sternum is open towards the ceiling a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight up, but you gotta find that happy medium to where you feel like you can easily talk. That's how you know your neck is in a good position. Because if I come too far down here, then my neck drops and my chin drops and I can't talk or breathe as easily. Same thing here, if I go too far back, then I feel like, oh, I can't really talk as easily here and also now my ribs are gonna flare. So you can find that happy spot. For me, that's right about here. And I have sort of this bridge position, but I'm not all the way there yet. So what you're gonna do to initiate this is squeeze your glutes, keeping your feet flat, and do a little posterior pelvic tilt. This should get your belt buckle moving closer to your belly button. You don't wanna do it so much to where you depress your sternum like this and your chin drops. It should just be boom, right there. And now I feel my glutes engaged, and I still feel like my sternum is pointing up towards the ceiling, my ribs aren't flaring. Then take your elbows, get them out directly from your shoulders, not too down here, not too up here, directly out resting on that ball, and just drop them back comfortably. Okay, now glutes are engaged. Now you're gonna do that same exact breathing pattern. Exhale through your mouth and really find those side abs, those obliques at the end of that exhale. You can get your obliques on a little bit more than the other drills right here, because this is harder. So it looks like this. Now, something I do on this exercise that I usually don't do on other exercises is think about when you inhale, opening up this area while holding onto those obliques and keeping your neck relaxed. Because if you visualize expansion happening here, you can sort of open this space a little bit easier. That can really help you feel those ribs start to move. Now, people are gonna be a little bit different here. So they have different limb lengths, they have different torso heights and rib cage structures. So you can play around with kind of scooting a little bit further on the ball like this, if that helps you, 
or even a little bit lower. Just again, make sure that your rib cage is in a good position where it's not gonna flare when you inhale and you're not gonna feel your neck. From there, yes, it would be important to get some muscles in the backside of your rib cage to help open up this space. But we don't want to overdo it because if we recruit these muscles in the backside of the rib cage, but then start flaring our ribs really hard, well, we're just pushing ourselves back into the compensatory inhalation strategy we were using in the first place. So only do this once you're truly ready for it. I would spend the first week or two mastering these other drills first and then going into this later once you can better create a non-compensatory inhalation strategy. What we're gonna do here is get up against a wall and have our knees far enough away from our chest where we're comfortable and our feet are flat. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, whatever works for you, but we have a little step underneath Trevor right there because that's gonna elevate him a little bit further off the ground so he can fully feel his sit bones on both sides as he does this exercise. So if you're feeling your sit bones on both sides, you know that your pelvis is in a good position. What we want to feel on the wall is our mid to upper back on the wall. Lower back will be slightly off and we wanna have the back of our head against the wall, maintaining a slight curvature within the back of the neck. If you can't get there, try to do your best to just stack your head over your shoulders. If you can't get there perfectly at first, that's fine, just do your best. Now, we have a very light band in the hands here, and the band needs to be very light. If it's really heavy, we're just gonna squeeze stuff way too hard and we're not gonna get anything out of this exercise. So it needs to be pretty much as light as you can go. And we need to have about a shoulder width grip on the band. So if we put the band out in front, shoulder width right there, just a little bit of tension on it. And now maintaining all the right things on the wall, he's going to pull that band to about nipple line or just above it. So his elbows are gonna be a little bit lower than the level of his shoulders. And he should feel some muscles on the backside of his shoulders engage. Now it should not be a lot, just a little bit. And if we're actively squeezing our shoulders back, we don't wanna do that because that's gonna flare the ribs and that's gonna have us lose that mid-back position on the wall. So make sure that the mid-back stays on the wall. Squeeze there, and now all we're gonna do is keep our wrist stacked over our elbow, and we're gonna breathe out through our mouth, maintaining that position. And we're gonna feel a little bit of side abs at the end of that soft five to 10 second exhale, just like any other breathing exercise. And then we're gonna maintain that as we slowly inhale through our nose. We're gonna feel our chest expand. It should feel really nice. Exhale again very softly. We should never feel our neck or anything uncomfortable above our shoulders as we breathe in. If we do, we're probably breathing in too hard or too fast. So it should be a pretty silent inhale there. If you're having a hard time keeping the back of your head on the wall without any issues, which some people will feel, it's totally fine to just do your best to stack it over your shoulders and your rib cage and just look perfectly straight ahead. Try not to look down or up. Just keep your eyes straight ahead and do the same exact breathing. The most common mistake on this exercise is that people will try to have their head be against the wall, but they'll shove their chin back. That actually closes off your airway. So if you can't comfortably breathe or talk in that position with your head against the wall, then don't force it back. Just have your head be in a nice neutral position where you have a slight curvature right here of your neck and you can just breathe and talk easily in that position without feeling any neck when you inhale. As for how many sets and reps you should do, I recommend two to three sets in both the morning and at night of about five breath cycles per set. More can be better, but again, like four-ish sets per day is where more can be better, but four sets per day done really, really well is way better than 10 sets a day, half-assed or not done very well. That's why I'm so dialed in on form and execution of these exercises being good.